Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about printing with TPU. If you're watching this video, you're probably familiar with TPU and some of the challenges that come with printing it. If you're not familiar with TPU, it's a flexible material uh, that can be used for some really cool stuff like producing gaskets, uh, making flexible toys, anything where you need a little bit of squish to your project. The flexibility of TPU, however, does make it a little bit challenging to work with. So today I'm going to walk you through getting to the perfect settings for your TPU. We're going to talk about things like moisture, temperature, cooling, speed, bed temperature, adhesion, supporting, retraction, and a few other things that may be important. I have with me today some Overture TPU that's rated at a 95A, that's the hardness. Um, I will say I've already experimented, as you can see by my uh, many attempts here next to me, and the settings that I'm going to share with you in this video uh, translate well between my Creality K1C and my Bamboo X1 Carbon. In the spirit of settings experimentation, I've chosen Benchy as my model that I'm testing with. My cat is giving her stamp of approval. So let's jump into it. The first thing we need to talk about is moisture. TPU is very susceptible to moisture. So much so, in fact, that I have chosen to actively dry the TPU while I am printing. Um, you don't necessarily need to be actively drying if you have dry TPU, but at the very least, you do need to have it inside of a dry box. You can get one of these guys here, I want to say for oh, 30 or 40 bucks. When it comes to bed adhesion, I do recommend using glue with TPU. Not so that it sticks better, but actually so that you can remove the TPU a little bit easier from the bed. I like to just get a layer down of the glue, and it actually just acts as kind of a decoupler between your build plate and the printing model itself. Bed temperature, I have heard all kinds of recommendations. I uh, ended up settling at 35 degrees Celsius. Um, I did find that having a little heat was good. It definitely helped with the adhesion and getting it off um, at the end of the print. Uh, but you don't want it too hot or you can end up with curling. Temperature. I found that it did need to be printed hot. What you're seeing here is the... Uh, pre-workings before my nozzle clogged. You can see it's getting real fuzzy on the skin there. But yeah, we, we definitely had a nozzle clog when we took the temperature down. Found the 230 Celsius was really the best. Oops. As far as cooling and fans go, um, I did not run the fans during the first layer. I found that to be kind of the best way to lay that first layer down. I do, however, run the fans for the rest of the time. It's recommended by the filament. And honestly, in my trials, I didn't really find any difference whether the fans were on or off. It just makes me more comfortable to hear the fans running. Don't judge me. I did find that turning off the auxiliary fan completely did reduce print quality. You can see we're getting a great first layer there. Part of the reason that first layer looks so good is because we're moving slowly. I have it set at only 15 millimeters per second, and that actually carries through the rest of the print. So yes, your prints are going to take a long time. This is the longest benchy I have ever printed, coming in at 2 hours and 42 minutes. A couple other things I highly recommend doing with your speed are making sure that you're slowing down for curled perimeters as well as uh, keep your travel speed high. Uh, this will help reduce stringing when you move quickly from one place to another. TPU doesn't do slopes well, and I did find that every Benchy I printed unsupported ended up with some sort of artifact in it like this. However, supporting Benchy left me with all these tiny little artifacts all over it where the supports kind of melded to the Benchy. So I do recommend for the supports, adjusting your top Z distance up a little bit to somewhere maybe between 0.25 and 0.30. And adjusting that top distance just helps to remove the supports a little bit easier. One other setting I found uh, important to help with stringing especially was to disable the Z hop. Uh, I also uh, upped the retraction value, the, the length from 
1.4 to 1.5 millimeters. That uh, default value needs to come up quite a bit. I also reduced the retraction speed to 15 millimeters per second. And all of that did help with stringing. I don't know if you can see, but we have quite a few less strings than in some of the benchies here on this one. For the bamboo printer, I did find that I needed to move the uh, max volumetric flow value up just a smidge, which they actually recommend doing in their documentation. I brought it up from 3 to 3.2. One more thing to add, and that is that pre-extruder tension, i.e. the uh, the amount of stuff pulling on your filament, can have an impact on your print quality. The, the flexible nature of the filament makes it so that if it's having to tug really hard to get into the extruder, you can have um, imperfections in your print. Lastly, I want to show you how to get TPU off of the build plate. I mentioned earlier that it was tough to do. So what I do is I like to just find a corner of my build and just give it a little spray of some isopropyl alcohol and then see if I can get up underneath that spot. So that one came off pretty quick. Uh, normally you're going to need to spend a little more time working it off the plate. I think I just got lucky. Uh, and also keep in mind that each printer is going to be a little different, but hopefully these settings give you at least a good starting point to get to your own perfect TPU settings for whatever printer you're using. Thanks for watching.